Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Better FPV 95XV3 Pusher style Cinemoop. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, compare it with its previous version, show you some flight footage and give you my feedback after testing it out. This interesting looking Cinewoop, which its frame combines molded plastic and carbon fiber parts, is available in both analog and digital versions and you can get it with multiple radio receiver options. You should note that while the digital version comes with the Cadex Nebula Nano V2 camera, my version initially didn't come with the Vista system, so I just installed it by myself, and I decided to use the Cadex Nebula Pro camera, which has a much better video quality in comparison to the Nebula Nano V2. As for packaging, inside its stylish box, along with the quadcopter, you can find a spare set of Gemfan D63 5-bladed 2.5-inch propellers, both nano and micro-sized camera mounts, a 90 degrees micro USB extension adapter that will enable you to access the flight controller, a hex key driver and some extra screws, a spare piece of protective foam and an adapter that will enable you to connect the JST connector which is pre-soldered to the flight controller and intended to be used with an SMO 4K camera with a naked GoPro camera. In terms of specs, the 95X V3 features BDI-FPV 1106 3800KV motors, which can handle up to 4S batteries. On the center of the frame, well protected under the hood, you can find an all-in-one F4 flight controller that features an integrated 20A BLL32 4-in-1 ESC. The Vista unit and the bundled BDI-FPV antenna are mounted on the back of the frame. The FPV camera is mounted on the front of the frame using either the nano or micro-sized adapter. Above it you'll be able to mount an action camera using this plastic molded part which is connected to the frame using silicon dampers. As I mentioned before, the JST connector which is designed to power an SMO 4K camera is pre-soldered to the flight controller. It is using an XT30 battery connector and the battery is going to be mounted sideways on the top of the frame. As for the frame, which is by the way available separately, its wheelbase is 99mm, it features a true X pattern, the thickness of the carbon fiber plate is 2mm, and on its own it weighs 323 grams. The assembled version of the 95X V3 weighs 120.7 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the previous version. And as for the differences between the V3 and the V2, First of all, the V3 is bundled with 1106-3800 kV motors, whereas the V2 is bundled with 1106-4500 kV motors, which might be more powerful, however the V3 is bundled with the Gemfan D63 5-bladed propellers, which should be more efficient according to Beta FPV and also in my experience, in comparison to the 4500 kV motors, which are pushing the included 3-bladed propellers. In addition, the frame along with the action camera mount have been redesigned and instead of using a separate flight controller and 4-in-1 ESC, the V3 is using an all-in-one board. Speaking about the flight controller, pay attention that in case you are going to install your own radio receiver and you are going to use the dedicated 4 pins JST connector, in case you are going to use an SBUS radio receiver, bridge the center pad with the right one, and in case you are going to use DSMX or other types of radio receivers such as Crossfire or in my case the TBS Tracer, brace the center pad with the left one. Now after this quick introduction, I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the chase and give you my feedback after testing the Beta FPV 95X V3. First of all, you are probably wondering if the V3 is better than the V2 and the answer in my opinion is yes, as it is more efficient and will provide you with a longer flight time and it also features a better quality frame that is going to better protect the internal components and also seems to me more crash resistant. As for flight time, including an 1100mAh Forest LHV battery, which is probably the biggest battery that you can fit on your drone and still stay under 250 grams, including an SMO 4K camera, you can expect between 4 to 6 minutes of flight time depending on how you fly, and including a 650mAh Forest LHV battery, you can expect between 3 to 4 minutes, again depending on how you fly. In terms of performance, I think that the V3 is slightly better than the V2, however if you are going to fly mainly outdoors and you are looking for a more powerful setup, I recommend to check out the Home FPV Wingsuit S, which I've recently reviewed. 
Anyway, personally, I'm not a big fan of how these cinewhoops fly, as I experienced vibrations with all of them, and in my opinion, these are just platforms that will enable you to capture HD footage both indoors and outdoors using a naked GoPro camera or the SMO 4K in a relatively safe manner. One last thing that I would like to discuss with you in this video is a durability issue of the SMO 4K camera. The 95X V3 is designed to carry this camera, which is going to be mounted on top of it in the following manner. So the 4 pins JST connector is connected on its sides, whereas on the naked GoPro camera it's connected on its back. The main problem is that if you're going to crash your drone, most of the chances are that you're going to hit its front side first, and then it is just going to flip like that, and if the SMO 4K camera is going to fly away, like happened to me, there is a good chance that the 4 pins JST connector is going to break, as there is no strain relief point, so the connector is just going to be pulled like that, whereas on the naked GoPro camera, it is just going to be disconnected. Luckily, I was able to solder back the 4 pins JST connector, and I recommend that in case you already have the SMO 4K camera, put something on the connector in order to make sure that it's going to be more secured. In addition, in case you are unable to solder back the JST connector, which is not a very easy task, and anyway, I recommend that if you try to do it, do it with cautious, you'll be happy to know that on the camera board itself, you can find DC input and ground pads, so you can just solder wires directly to these pads in order to power the camera. I'm going to report back this issue to Beta FPV and Mid Century 60, so hopefully on the next version of this camera the issue is going to be resolved, and I also hope that they are going to provide us with the option to purchase a new back cover, which is going to cover the 4 pins JST connector as well, so it is going to be better secured. As for a solution for the camera flying away from the drone, and by the way, on the crash I almost lost it on the ground, I recommend that you should use dental floss on the silicone dampers, so they are going to be more secured, and the mount is not going to be easily separated from the drone. Anyway, that's going to be it for my review of the Beta FPV 95X V3, and on the second part of this review, you'll be able to watch some flight footage. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.